Hello team, how's it going? Welcome back to another video. So we are talking about a UK British soldier who is looking to sue the army for a non-freezing cold injury. I'm not going to tell you how much he's suing for. It's a lot. You'll see it in a second. We're going to get into this. He's got a non-freezing cold injury. He's had to leave the army due to it. Um, he's now saying he's got a disability um, and it's now affecting him for the rest of his life. But let's get into this story. I'm gonna give you my opinion, my experience, what my thoughts are on some of this. I'm gonna see it from both sides. I'll give you my thoughts on both sides. Um, and then I'll give you my overall feeling on the end of it, whether I agree with it or not. So I am a, a serving soldier in the British Army, uh, served for 15 years, and I'm gonna give you my thoughts now. Let's get into it. So, as you can see here, soldier told to man that F up by a female corporal when he complained he was cold on a training exercise sues the MOD for 1.5 million. 1.5 million. Wow. Claiming it left him with trench foot and his Nigerian heritage made him more susceptible to injury. So let's just cover a couple of points here. Why the hell does it have to say female corporal there? Why can't it just be a corporal? A corporal told him to man F up. Firstly, we've all had that said to us, shouldn't be part of the court case. Um, well, yeah, it sort of should be. We'll get into that a little bit because it does cover 1.5 million is an insane amount of money. Um, definitely not gonna earn that in your military career, but you don't know what sort of disability he's left in and how it's affected him in future. So I'm not gonna really go into the money too much. That is an awful lot of money. Um, whether he's ever gonna earn that in his life and it's affected him that much, sort of he knows. I, I do feel like it's a little bit too much, but you just don't know. I'm not gonna get involved in the money. Trench foot. Okay, so when it comes to trench foot, I've read this article before. Um, I'm gonna read it again, just to see if we can pick it up. But trench foot is down to your own admin, okay? When I mean admin, your own administration. Trench foot takes time to come on. It doesn't just come on instantly. That's not, really, that's not a non-freezing cold injury, okay? The trench foot, I don't agree with that's he's bad administration okay he's bad bad admin bad admin right he's messed up there in my personal opinion he's not been changing his socks regularly he's not been keeping his feet dry and he's not been using talcum powder trench foot like i said takes time to come on and the non-freezing cold injury we're, we're coming to a little bit the nigerian heritage makes him more susceptible to injury it does um, you do need to watch out for this if you are serving um, and you're sort of from the Caribbean or some sort of African heritage, please be careful when out um, in the extreme cold condition, um, it, conditions. You do need to be a little bit more prepared with extra equipment um, and sort of huddling around your mates and just making sure you're working together to keep yourself warm because you are more susceptible to um, those sorts of injuries. Let's look down then. Former soldier was the Ministry of Defence, like we said, for a non-impact non cold injury and was told to man the F up after complaining about the temperature during a combat training exercise. That that's there, can, can sort of be taken out of um, context. If someone just come up to me um, and I was an instructor and just went, oh, it's really cold, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, man the F up. You mostly are gonna say that. If they're gonna come to you and say, oh my God, it's freezing cold, I'm in absolute disarray, this hurts, this hurts, this hurts, and I don't have them carry on, then you need to pull them to one side, have to check them over as an instructor, um, or then pass them on to the medics if you really feel they need to. If someone just comes up to you and goes, oh, it's really cold, and oh, oh. So you do get people out there who do just complain that it's really cold, man the F up and carry on. He was left permanently disabled after being made to lie on wet and cold ground during a command leadership course at Longmore in Hampshire in November. I'm not laughing at the person permanently disabled. I do generally hope he's not, um, and I do hope it's not that severe. But to be made, <laughs> being made to lie on wet and cold ground during a command leadership exercise. This is the British Army. We lay, lie, lay on cold and wet ground, right? This is what people need to get in the head. We're not your normal job. We do stuff that is uncomfortable, it's crap, it's rubbish, and you have to do it. You have to lie on cold and wet ground. The enemy's not gonna stop shooting at you because it's cold and wet. He's on a command leadership course. He should be proven he's a leader and he needs to get down on the cold and wet ground. The only problem is, this is a news article and I don't know the full story, and it's the Daily Mail. So 
it is a bit of a pain that I don't have all the information, but that is a ridiculous comment that Daily Mail have put in and they should put in it because we lie on cold and wet ground and that's not going to give you trench foot. He claims uh, when he complained about feeling severe cold after his non-waterproof combat smock wetted out, he simply was told to man the F up by a corporal helping to run the course. Once again, this comes down to administration, your admin, okay? If your smock is getting that wet, which it does because it rains, you should have a set of dry kit. So when you're on your task in the day or night, you're in your wet kit. When you come back to your harbour area, um, compound, whatever it is you're working out of, FOB, CP, whatever it is, you, you hide and you're in your rest period and you go and sleep, you put your dry kit on. And then when you wake up in the morning or get up for your stag duty, you put your wet kit back on and then you get out. The problem is so many people don't like doing it, they just sit there in their wet kit and they get cold. Also, where's his waterproof jacket? He's on a command leadership course, he should have a waterproof jacket on. Secondly, like I said, I don't know the full story, this is the Daily Mail, but I'm just going off what's in here um, so people can understand in the future, okay? If your combat smock and your jacket is getting that wet, find a way of drying it. Get your waterproof jacket on. The new Gore-Tex is made to go underneath. So if your smock's that wet, put your new Gore-Tex underneath, put your smock over the top. That's going to help keep you a little bit insulated and it's going to stop you from getting wet. When you get in your sleeping bag at night, put your dry kit on. Lots of people don't. Right, hours after you complained the second time you served with all logistics corps was given medical treatment after insisting he could not continue with the training course. I'm not going to say his name because I don't want to do it justice. Um, he says he suffered a non-freezing cold injury which has left him more vulnerable to chilly temperatures in both his hands and feet leading him to having to leave the army. Okay, yes, if you do get a non-freezing cold injury on a certain part of your body, that certain part of your body is definitely going to be more successful. Um, to get an injured even one, you really do have to be careful. So he does have to be careful. If he generally has one, you do need to watch him and see and be careful what sort of situations you put him in. Um, I've spoken about the African ethnicity. They are at greater risk, so please be aware of that. Um, that muddy, that's what we run through, crawl through, lay in. That's standard, okay? That shouldn't even be part of this article because it's just normal. According to the court documents, um, it's taken part in a grueling leadership course. Yeah, leadership courses are pretty hard. They are grueling, they are disgusting, but they need to be to turn you into leaders to see what you, you've got to see if you can perform under pressure. John which had to lie in prone on the ground in wet and cold conditions when he claimed he was injured. Okay, once again, it depends on what this injury is and how severe it is. Um, he claims his clothing quickly became soaked through, but his complaints fell in the deaf ears, okay? People reading this, this is what's really annoying. Um, if he is suffering of an injury and he's telling people that I am feeling really, really cold, the directing staff do need to take him away and not just tell him to man the F up. They do generally need to take him a look away. But this whole lying on the ground and becoming so quickly is just standard. My course, I just spent three weeks, two weeks in Brecon, wet every day, literally all day, every day. I spent about two or three hours out of the day dry. That was absolutely it. And that was when I was in my sleeping bag. Um, you got up in the morning, you put your wet kit on, you went running through streams, rivers, crawling across ground, it rained all day, got wet. It's just standard. That is really annoying and I hate it when newspapers or um, sort of news outlets or journalists do this because they don't understand and it's annoying and they try and pull it, throw it in there for drama. That's normal. Um, if he genuinely had an injury and he was complaining and they did fob him off, then that's, that is actually genuinely bad. He complained to a female corporal once again, why didn't he put female in there? We're all corporals. Um, who was a member of the directing staff and the head of his team, okay? So she's more than likely going to be the section commander. She advised him to hold his rifle with both hands and told him to man the F up. Once again, this depends on the situation and what he is actually saying to her. If he's just lying there, because I've had this before, oh, corporal, this is really cold and wet, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, carry on with it. He's, if he's generally going, oh, this is really cold and wet, I'm, I'm getting sharp shooting pains in my hands or feet, like really severe sharp shooting pains, and you need to drag him one side, look at his administration, see if he needs to see a medic. Um, but we don't know the full story on that. Later on, his symptoms worsened as he took turns um, doing guard duty overnight, most probably stag, and when he complained to another NCO, he was told to carry on. Um, once again, what sort of kit is he sitting there and weighing in? Like, I've seen it so many people, like, 
you're feeling cold and wet, you go on a stack, have you got the correct gloves on, okay? Have you got like a little shemag around your neck? Have you got a couple of layers on? Because you know you're sitting there on a stack, okay? Or are you just sitting there with a t-shirt, shirt, and you're piss wrapped wet through smock? Or once again, like I said, has he put the new Gore-Tex jacket that's made to go under your smock when it's wet, to go underneath your smock, to keep you fucking dry, um, to keep you dry and insulated, to put your wet smock over the top, to try and help dry it out throughout the night? Is he doing stuff like this? If you're, if you're struggling with things like that, make sure you're doing stuff like that, okay? Don't, if your kit's getting wet, try and dry it, okay? Make sure you do wet and, wet and dry drills. Uh, however, a few hours later, he had to be taken for medical treatment as he couldn't continue. Even after he was medically downgraded due to his injury, he continued to be exposed to cold conditions. Okay, this is, this is when it gets quite bad. Uh, a year later, he was ordered to work in a warehouse with a broken heating system. Me personally, I wouldn't say that's that bad. And he also took part in another grueling winter exercise. Okay, that could be quite bad. If it's a grueling winter exercise, depending on where it is and depending on what the job he does. Okay, once again, it comes down to administration. If you're working in a cold warehouse, make sure you're just wearing the correct equipment to work in there. Um, make sure you're taking breaks to go into warm places. There is ways around it. Don't just work in there until you're injured. If you need to wear gloves, wear gloves. If you need to wear thick socks, wear thick socks. If you need to wear cold weather boots, wear cold weather boots. Um, if you need to wear a smock, wear a smock. If you need to take breaks every half hour and go somewhere warm to warm up, then do things like that. Um, same with exercise, what job you're putting in. Is he taking the correct equipment on exercise? I've seen it so many times. Are people taking the correct sleeping bags? Are they taking enough spare kit? Are they changing correctly? Are they changing their socks correctly? If he's getting trench foot, he's not doing that. Okay, the non freezer cold injury, I'm saying that generally is, and um, people may have messed up there, but the trench foot, generally more than likely, he's just had wet feet and he's not looked after him correctly. It has led to significant psychological problems. If he generally has got a problem, yeah, then definitely because he was in more just kids when he was injured, joining 2013 for seven years. Okay, so for seven years, this is where it gets like, okay, um, as black African at this, he would have been a great at risk, definitely, of non freezing cold injury. This is where I want to look at. So, his lawyers say that those in command failed to warn him about those potential hazards provide the right cold weather gear, monitor his conditions, or even learn adequate and sufficient hot food and drinks on a regular basis. On a command leadership course, you are getting minimal food and hot drinks. You're mostly eating rations, so it's down to you, okay? So it's not up to them, okay? You should be able to survive in Longmore in November for a week or two by yourself, like we, in your section, you should need to be going into a barn constantly. Yeah, it will be nice to go into a barn every few nights to have hot food every night. But that's not how it works. You should be able to survive for a few nights out in the field. Um, this is where where he says is not prepared as well. This is which this is actually where it was a bit annoying. If he's actually saying this, in my personal opinion, he's sort of lying. The army provides some really good cold weather equipment and they're hot on it, okay? Because they've been sued so many times before. They are all over it. In basic training, you'll see it here. Um, he was issued um, with standard army kit, like we all are, um, which was suitable and sufficient. Um, that's what they are saying. He also would have had a foot care explained to him during basic training. Every soldier has a brief and they get given a leaflet like it says here. And you even have these briefs throughout your career. So you are given the warnings and training, in basic training and throughout your career on how to look and watch out for non-freezing cold injuries and how to look after your feet and your body and yourself. Um, and that's the end of the article. So like I said, there is a problem with it being a Daily Mail, we don't fully understand it, they're going to try and turn it into more of a story than what it actually is. But this is what, if we do live in a problem in a world and an army where there is this whole suing and um, blaming culture in my personal opinion. He genuinely might have a disability and the director and staff, def you know, they possibly could have been lacking some sort of sympathy and leadership where they might have not checked him over correctly. But you've got to look at it from both sides and I've seen it so many times where people complain about the cold and wet just because they're lying in the cold and wet and a lot of it come, comes down to their own personal administration. This guy had been in the army for seven years so he should know how to look after himself, he shouldn't be getting trench foot. Um, Non-freezing cold injuries just from lying in the prone um, on the ground for a little while isn't really going to give you a non-freezing cold injury. These are built up over the time while he's on the exercise, okay? 
Is he taking the correct socks with him, equipment? Is he wearing the correct boots? Is he drying his feet out as, as much as possible? His hands, is he wet? You know, has he just got one set of gloves that are constantly getting wet? Has he got a wet set, a dry set? Has he got a contact set of gloves, okay? So he's wearing the contact set of gloves when he's in the prone and then when he's resting, chilling in a bit of downtime, he's putting a nice warm set on to keep his hands warm. Is he changing his socks regularly, using talcum powder, etc.? People need to stop blaming. He generally, there might generally might be a problem, um, and I do hope it's not serious. And I hope whatever it is, he sorts it out. Um, but just my point here is, be all over your administration and just look after yourself. Um, it's not the directing staff are there to help you, but he's on a command leadership course um, to prove that he can promote to the next rank, whether that's Lance Corporal or Corporal. I'm not sure which command leadership course he is on. Um, he should be able to administrate himself out in the field in Longmore in November. Um, we all lie on wet, cold floors as part of being in the army. That comment did really annoy me by the Daily Mail. Um, but yeah, let us know what your thoughts are. I feel like this sort of stuff needs to stop. People are trying to sue here, sue there, sue everywhere. And um, when actually sometimes you can look down to it and it's their own general fault. The MOD does mess up and it does ruin people's careers. Don't get me wrong. Um, the point I wanted to get across was you need to look at it from his side, but you also need to look at it from the MOD side um, because they are on top of it at the minute as well because they've been sued so many times. Um, but that's it. Hope you enjoyed the video and I'll see you soon.